Hello bookworms! Today I'm here with my October book haul. Um, I actually was considering making this a book slash Harry Potter haul because I got so much Harry Potter stuff this month um, and then I realized that there was just so much of it that I'm gonna actually make that into a separate video so I hope that you don't mind. One of the books in this haul or that would be in this haul would be Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets Illustrated but that's gonna be in the Harry Potter haul so spoilers for that with so many toys and stuff. I'm so excited about it. But anyway, I'm here to talk about the books that I got in October. So I'm gonna do what I usually do and show you all of the new releases first and then move on to some of the backlist books that I picked up. So first I have This Adventure Ends by Emma Mills. I read this book. It was one of the first books that I read in October actually and I loved it so much. Um, it was so well written. It's such a cute story. Um, it's a contemporary and it follows a girl named Sloane. She moves to Florida from New York and she never really had a group of friends before but then she falls in with this one group and it just like changes her whole life. It's really really cute. It's really nice to see um, like the struggles that her family's having as well as the things that she is facing in school. One of the girls in it that she becomes friends friends with is like internet famous. That's just another like fun aspect of it and it's just really cute. It was a really really good contemporary and I actually liked it so much that I picked up her other book that she previously published. Then I have Rebel Genius by Michael Dante DiMartino. I've talked about this book a whole bunch of times and I actually got an arc of it at BEA um, and I still haven't read it which I'm very upset about and I plan on changing very soon because Michael uh, Dante DiMartino, for those who don't know, is the creator of Avatar The Last Airbender, um, and I love that series, so I'm definitely really interested in seeing, in reading this new fantasy series that he's putting out. So it follows a young boy who has become an orphan, and he lives in the society where art is outlawed, but people that are artistic tend to have these um, like creatures, they're like bird-like creatures, and they're called geniuses. So for so one day one appears next to him, which means that he is artistic, and then he kind of needs to go into hiding so that he doesn't get in trouble in society because art is just outlawed. So he finds this other civilization of people and goes to live there. And it just sounds really good. It's supposed to be an epic fantasy, and I can't wait to read it. Then I got Royal Tour by Amy Alward, and this is the second book in the Potion Diary series. The first book was Madly and it had a much better cover. This cover is so terrible and it really bothers me too because the spine doesn't even match the spine of the first one so they don't even look good to neck like next to each other on my shelf which is really irritating but whatever. I think this is closer to what the UK cover was for the original release but it's the second book in the series for those who don't know it's a very like light fantasy series and it follows a girl who is a potion master and in the first book there was a great hunt to find this potion to save the princess who would become the queen and now in the second book there is another hunt going on but I won't go into what it's about because I don't want to spoil anything for the first book. Then I got The Lovely Reckless by Cami Garcia. Uh, this is a contemporary novel and it follows a girl who um, used to live like a very privileged life but then she has to transfer um, after the death of her boyfriend and she moves in with her dad and she transfers to a school that's not as good as the one that she used to go to and she ends up meeting this guy who is very into like street racing I believe. Um, so it's just a cute contemporary about that and it sounds good. Then I have Glitter by April Lynn Pike. This one I'm really excited for. Um, it takes place in kind of like a dystopian society, which is something that I haven't been interested in lately, but this synopsis just really completely like captured my attention because the main character um, is this girl named Danny, and she lives in this world where everybody dresses and acts like it's the 18th century, like during the time of Marie Antoinette, which sounds so cool. I can't wait to read about like all of the fashion and everything in this book. It also sounds really interesting because the main character's mother is blackmailing the king into marrying her daughter and her daughter does not want to get married to him so her solution is that she starts selling glitter which is a drug in um in this society and she thinks that that's kind of like her ticket out of the palace and out of uh being forced to marry this dangerous man so it just sounds like everything about it just sounds so good and i was really intrigued about this and i love the cover and i cannot wait to read it oh my pumpkin pie is ready Where's my phone? So, sorry about that. I had a pumpkin pie in the oven and it was ready, so I had to take it out. Um, I had to bake one because it's autumn and I haven't made one yet. And yeah, my apartment smells 
amazing right now. But anyway, I'm gonna get back into the books that I picked up. Then I have What Light, and this is by Jay Asher. I actually was not really super interested in this book because I really don't know why, I just wasn't. And then I finally, like, actually read the synopsis and found out that it takes place on a Christmas tree lot. So obviously I was instantly like, duh, what was I thinking? Um, so I don't know too much else aside from that. That was really all that I needed to know about it. Um, so as soon as I found out that, that there was like Christmas stuff going on, I was just instantly into it. And I am probably going to read it in November or early December so that I can like get into the spirit of Christmas. And then another Christmas book that I picked up, The 12 Days of Dash and Lily by David Levithan and Rachel Cohn. This book is the sequel to Dash and Lily's Book of Dares, which also took place around Christmas and was so cute. And I really enjoyed that book. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how their relationship is going now and how everything's playing out. Um, I know there's going to be some issues, but I can't wait to read it. And there's also Christmas trees on the cover. So pretty much just sold. Then actually, before I continue with the rest of the new releases that I have, I'm just going to show you um, a another Christmas book because it just makes sense. So I also picked up um, Letters from Father Christmas by J.R.R. Tolkien. Obviously he is the writer of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit um, and I have wanted this since last year but I never picked it up because I really really wanted the hardcover edition that is basically this picture but larger but it's out of print and it's been difficult to find and I don't really want to spend a ton of money on it. I found it in a little bookstore um, at one point but it was like a library edition so it had that like clear plastic over it and then I didn't want that so I decided to just pick it up in paperback because the important thing is that I read it. I love 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 the premise of it. I think it's so cute. So Tolkien pretended to be Santa and he wrote all of these letters to his children about the North Pole um, and it just sounds so adorable. So I'm I cannot wait to read this one. Then back to a couple more new releases. I got Black Widow Red Vengeance by Margaret Stoll. This is the second book in the Black Widow series um, and I was actually sent this by Marvel Press and I am very excited to read this because obviously I love comics and Marvel and Black Widow is amazing. So yeah. Also it has a really good cover. I don't want to say anything about the synopsis because I don't want to spoil the first one but definitely check this out. Then I also got the Art of the Castle in the Sky. This is just an art book of the Studio Ghibli film, The Castle in the Sky. I have a bunch of the other art books and this one is actually Andrew's favorite Ghibli film. So we had to get it to add to our collection. Um, and yeah, can't wait to flip through it and then put it on the shelf with my Kiki's Delivery Service and Howl's Moving Castle books. Then I have The Season by Jonah Lisa Dyer and Stephen Dyer. This is relatively newish. I believe it came out over the summer and it is a like southern contemporary and it takes place during debutante season, which I really love reading about those things. So I'm excited for it just at that alone. But then I also found out that it is inspired by Pride and Prejudice. Yes, it says it's a, a fun modern take on Pride and Prejudice, so that got me even more interested in it. Then I have First and Then by Emma Mills. This is Emma Mills' first book. The first book that I showed you in this video was her new book that just came out, and I loved it so much that I instantly picked this one up. Funnily enough, I believe this one is also a modern day Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> retelling story type thing. But I know that it involves football, which is why I had initially been hesitant about it because I don't really like sports. But I seem to enjoy reading about sports. I just don't seem to enjoy watching sports or sports culture. So I am interested in this and uh, if it's anything like her other book, I know that I'm gonna love it. Next, I have a book that I already own. So I have Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I am definitely somebody that likes the US cover better than the UK cover, even though the UK cover is definitely beautiful too, like don't get me wrong, it is really nice. I just really like the US one for some reason. Um, so I was very pleased with my choice and everything until I realized <laughs> that the end papers in this one look like space. It's just the most beautiful thing ever. So I just like, I was like, oh my god, I need this. Like, I just love it. And I feel like once I do read Nevernight, I am going to end up loving it as well. So I probably won't mind that I have two of them. But yeah, that 
just sold me. Then I have Hotel Ruby by Suzanne Young. This is a thriller novel that takes place inside of a hotel and I got it a really cheap in book outlet so I couldn't say no to it because I have been interested in it since it came out. I just never ended up picking it up. Then I got A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGuinness. This I also got on book outlet for very inexpensive which I was really excited about um, but I read Mindy McGuinness's book The Female of the Species this past month and I really enjoyed it and I really want to read everything else that she's written uh, because I love that one so much. So I was really glad to get this. A lot of people read it last year. This one came out last October, I believe. I know it's a historical thriller and it takes place um, in an insane asylum and it follows this one girl. So I don't want to know much else about it because it sounds like something that I will definitely want to like discover as I read. Then I have a series of books. It's, it's actually a completed series and it's sort of new because they were previously published, but the covers were terrible in my opinion. They were basically just uh, like photos of men's abs, which are fine, but I just don't like that as a book cover. I always think that they could be like better than that and that's not necessarily something that I would want to be reading in public. Anyway, so they came out with the new covers and then I finally decided to pick them up. Everyone seems to love them um, and here I'll show you what they are. It's the Off Campus series by L. Kennedy. Um, so the first book in the series is The Deal. The second book is The Mistake. The third book is The Score. And the fourth book is The Goal. So this is a completed series, although I did hear that um, now there's going to be a spin-off series that follows one of the characters, probably someone who's introduced in the fourth book, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm really excited to get to these. Again, I was a little bit hesitant because sports, but um, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna do it. Then I have Mirrored by Alex Finn. This is a Snow White retelling um, and I just really like fairy tale retellings and this one was also really cheap so I snatched it up. Then I was really excited about this purchase because I've been going back and forth about whether I wanted to or not because there's already so many series that I collect that I really don't need to like start another collection but obviously I decided to just do it anyway. And those are the UK editions of the Throne of Glass books. Um, these are the beautiful white spines. I think that they are so much nicer than the dark ones. And I really wish that they would like make these ones in hardcover, but unfortunately they don't, they're paperback. So that is why these are going to be my like pretty ones for photos <laughs> that I'm never gonna open so that they don't like get broken or anything. But I'll just show you the covers. So. They're very similar to the US covers, it's just that the background is white. Um, so there's Throne of Glass, which is the first one, Crown of Midnight, which is the second one, and has a red back, which is really cool, Air of Fire with a pretty teal back, Queen of Shadows with a blue back, and Empire of Storms with like an ice blue back. So I'm really excited to add those to my collection. I have to find a special place on my shelves for them, um, but I love them so much, so yeah. Then I got a couple of books that are kind of like unconventional. Um, so I got this Paris in Love book by Nicole Robertson, and it's really just an adorable like photography book of all different photos throughout Paris, and most of them have like a red, gold, and black type color scheme going on um, and it's just really pretty really enjoyable and I like photography so it's just a fun like coffee table book. Then I got Creative Lettering and Beyond by Walter Foster. That was really difficult to find, but I have been bullet journaling lately and I really, really love it. And it's been so fun, like challenging myself to draw new fonts and stuff. So I thought that this would be a good book to read um, in order to make my bullet journal like the best that it can possibly be. Then I got The Little Dictionary of Fashion by Christian Dior. And this is just a fun little book about fashion. And another fashion book that I got is Coco Chanel, The Illustrated World of Fashion by Megan Hess. This one is so pretty and the pages are silver, which is gorgeous. Um, but the whole thing is just illustrated and it's all based on Coco Chanel and I just love it. And yeah, I'm really, really excited to have this book and to have my other Paris book. I feel like it was a very good month for just like pretty books. And then the last thing that I got, which isn't actually a book, but I just wanted to show it because I'm pretty excited about it. Disney re-released Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas on DVD and Blu-ray, and I could not turn that down. So I'm really, really excited to have this and I really wanna watch it like as soon as possible. Um, <laughs> if you can't tell, I'm already pretty excited for Christmas. Not even Halloween yet, but 
I'm there. I'm, it's Christmas for me. So I am just really, really excited. And I probably should have shown it with the other Christmas stuff, but whatever. So those are all of the books that I picked up in October. Hopefully you were able to find something new in this haul that you maybe didn't hear about before and you can add to your own TBR. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you have had a wonderful reading month and let me know some of the things in this haul that you may have read or want to read. Um, and I will talk to you guys soon and see you with a new video. Bye! Thank you.